combo phenomenally on this stage. Yes, any uh, Falco will take any platform extension and just start stacking it up, if you will. And the thing about Smashville too, it's so it's so important on who controls center stage. It's and it's the smallest stage in, in our entire stage list. So uh, I feel like even for some projectile characters, it, it's it's so weird because I see projectile characters do really well on this stage too, just because if they control center, it's so, so strong, even though it's the smallest stage in our stage list. It's like a hyperbolic version of Battlefield where like Battlefield, you control the center stage, you control so much because you have, you deny the platforms, you deny a lot of the active aerial space. With Smashville, there's not a lot of active space, and there's not a lot of distance from the edge of the center platform to the ledge. Right. So majority of characters, especially ones who can who can defend a space well, like you're denying almost the entire stage without having to leave centers. It's really important, especially for like both of these guys. Like when Falco jumps, that's his hard commitment. Everything else from that point is sort of free flow, and you have to react more, but. Once that jump happens, now you know what you have to do. You have to deny that landing space as well. The same can be said for Rob if he's forced to play in the air a lot. Tries to get the down air. Ooh, wow, Ooh. what a trippy, empty jump right there. That was really smooth coming out from Kofi. And just really showing the empty jump and making him feel safe for him to drop shield or jump. And then Kofi with the immediate call out with that rising back air. And wow, was that your double jump? Yes, it Ooh. was. Ooh! It's a drop on the gyro managing to snipe from the ledge. You gotta love it. All right. So both these boys gotta watch their ankles moving forward. Oh, yeah, for sure. And the fact that... Because Falco usually can make that back because he has one of the best double jumps, but it was just the timing from MJ. He knew exactly when and where to place that gyro and get that stage fight to take the stock and not just get some damage. Q combo from the ledge. Gonna rack up a good amount of damage for Kofi. Let's see if we can keep MJ here at the ledge. Instead, he's going to get caught in another up tilt. Although, smart on MJ for being able to just jump out of it. Yeah. yeah like, he's got to be careful about when he chooses those, but just taking to the sky is sometimes the easiest way of being able to uh, escape Falco pressure. Yeah, at this point, you just got to watch the up tilt back air at very specific spots of the stages. That's probably Falco's strongest confirm in terms of, like, how early he'll kill you. But I, I think MJ is pretty much out of those percentages now. And, I mean... Rob with some rage it is a pretty scary factor. He can connect like falling there into side B at this point, gets the right hit. So, uh, some of Rob's moves are just that powerful and just outright kill you with the amount of rage. Using the back air for the recovery. What's the ledge trap here from Kofi? None. Instead, he's going to eat in there, take some damage of his own. And I like these pokes with the forward air. It's really, he's like trying to get like maximum distance, Ooh. a great call out. Rob hangs a little bit over the ledge, so you can be a little bit more uh, risque with how you try to punish off that. Of course, down smash, a great option from Kofi. Ooh, the pivot slide up tilt, and we're just gonna <laughs> keep on spamming that. I like to call that the uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. If it doesn't connect, just keep slapping the C stick. It's gonna work eventually. It'll work eventually. <gasps> no grab off the punish. Shielding the any of the side beasts from the space is super good because they're not going anywhere. But odd that MJ wasn't able to punish it. Yeah, and I, I like Kofi's use of laser. You know, it's definitely no brawl double laser, but it gets the job done. It gets some damage, but MJ finally gets in and just twirls on him with that down smash. Bit of an eye for an eye in this set so far. Yeah, Although I like it. Yeah, it's great too because I mean MJ does is like kind of behind, but he's Rob. You kind of like start your stocks off at like 50, at least 50% against Falco because one hit just leads into that anyway. Right. So it, it honestly isn't that big of a deal. He's been chipping away, already 48 and counting. Yeah, I feel like MJ's actually playing to that notion. Like he knows he's combo food. He knows he's just going to get chipped down throughout the set. And so that's why we're seeing a bit more of the aggro options. The patience coming out from MJ did not flinch in the corner there. But here comes Kofi. Tries to set up a ledge trap situation, but oh, he gets the parry and a down tilt. What's the setup here? MJ goes high. Ooh, didn't get crossed up by the up air. If he got crossed up, he was dead. Oh, down he, tilt. Oh. He, th oh, he messed up. He had that. He even got the jet. If he just down smashed, right? Yeah, he could have just down smashed, or I think he tried to go for two jabs. That could be it. No platform extension to get the kill, though. Oh, he tried to snatch him up. Rob's grabbing. Oh, just, oh you are out. Ooh. Yeah. I thought he might have lived because he missed the platform, but yeah. With the rage, uh, oh, man, I, I mean, to be fair, he kind of had that, you know what I mean? Like, if, if I'm Kofi in that situation, I'm not too tight, because it's like, ah, uh, well, you should have won anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah. Thankfully for Kofi, he has like 
unmovable focus when it comes to the game. So unmovable, you say? Even though MJ, MJ could try to go for like the cheesiest stuff, or he could just outright outplay him. And Kobe I, wouldn't flinch. I hope he, yeah, he'll be, he'll be chilling. He could get like, so you're telling me he side could at like two percent and he'll die. He Kobe's could counterpick like, Ganondorf and zero death him. Kobe like wouldn't flinch. Was just nothing. He'll just do like the FGC nod. Like, oh, okay. All, all right. right, all right. Dang, the resilience. Kobe with the resilience. Mm -hmm. So pretty tight game one. Let's see how Kofi can respond while MJ's got the momentum in his corner. I wonder what the counter pick is. Like, I wonder who the guy was that was like PS2 and then the other dude was like, nah. Because, I mean, it's Kofi. Yeah, it's Kofi's counter pick. And, I mean, maybe maybe MJ just banned PS2. I don't know. Because one of them had to is suggest PS2, right? Like, I, I'm just trying to... I'm trying to think of a world where both players are not okay with PS2, and I, I'm just not seeing it. Yeah, it's it's super rare. Are you dead? Okay, okay. Not yet. Oh, that would. If you had rage, though. Yeah, that's definitely not an out the gate killer on uh, on Smashville, but it's hefty damage to start with. It's just like you said. Rob basically starts with that free damage. Yeah. But MG's been playing it accordingly, and I feel like. He even played out game one really well, despite it being a little bit sloppy. He missed a couple of kill confirms, and I feel like he got picked off by things where Kofi probably would have had to set up a little harder for. Uh -huh. But I digress. He still managed to take game one past that. And he's doing a good job of taking back the stage here. Oh, he went for it. All yeah. right. What's the punish here, though? Kofi trying to get the ledge roll. If you can get an up tilt right by the edge here into back air, that'll be the stock. I wonder if he'll try to set it up here. It looks like here's the setup, but he back airs to the left instead of the right there. He doesn't turn it around. I don't know if he's trying to go for a, a DI mix-up or if that was just a miss but Nonetheless, he's beating on MJ. He's got to make a count, and Rising Bear from the ledge will do it. Yep, catches the ledge jump there. Uh, I feel like MJ thought it was safe because he saw him go off stage like that, but fell right into his trap. And look at, oh, man, if he got that second up air, or, yeah, that second up air, that would have been so much damage. But nonetheless, still 46. Man, look at Kofi. He still has all this momentum on his side. And right now, MJ just trying to get back. Another roll gets caught here. He's just always ready for the roll. And especially in a pressured situation like this. Like, it's to be expected. But oh. he can't be going for that option too often. And we'll see MJ start to adapt appropriately. Oh, man. And the backer doesn't hit. Tries to get the up throw back air. And, oh, man, if, if MJ connects another, yep. Gets the up tilt. Up, uh, up till backer, but it's center stage. And I like how he set that up on these bigger characters. You can actually set up these up tilts with the drag down fair and even sometimes drag down there. Oh, all right. The afterburner. Got him. You know, another move we've been seeing MJ put out a good amount of is uh, is down air. And I know we, we talked a little bit about the, uh, the, the crunchy data earlier. One thing I want to bring up, that down air is active, has an active hitbox for like five frames. Wow. Yeah, it's like it, you're ready to die. If you're not just getting sent to the depths with the spike, like it's still going to just put on some At least hit damage. You, yeah. yeah. Okay, but Kofi gets control of the top, but the top is fading away here. And yep. And, ooh, yep, there it is. Up tilt up air on that platform, especially at that point, it's just like you're you're pretty dead. Especially at the percent that he was at. Yeah, not get, even good that good DI was saving him. Ooh, look at this platform pressure though. Doesn't reflect the top. Oh, he tried to go for it. All right. Yeah, right Right now it feels like MJ definitely kind of reaching for some of these kills. Uh, and, I mean, there some of them are pretty creative, but I just feel like Kofi's doing a really good job of holding on to the stock and really getting back on the stage. Just as I say it, don't worry, MJ. I got you, man. I had to hit him with the curse real quick. That was a great response, too. <laughs> it was like MJ's been doing a great job of shielding all of these, these side beats from Kofi. But we haven't seen a really strong punish out of it. He managed to get the parry off and instantly go for the up smash. I love it as an option because you get that scoop. You you know you're able to follow that up. Knowing your parry punishes is super important, especially against a spacey. Yeah, and right now, uh, Kofi doing a really good job. Uh, oh, missed the tech. Oh, he oh. didn't dash far enough. That is the standard setup there. Um, you just keep coming in with those dash down tilts, and once they miss the tech, you lock them or you just hit them with the down smash. Right now, Kofi is the one rocking the larger tank of uh, Rage here. If he gets an up tilt set up by the edge, he might be able to get this game. But right now, MJ with all the control and the oh, top set up. Yep. Woo, and right. everybody popping off for MJ right now. The feel of themselves is up 2-0. And he's one more game from bringing himself further into the loser's bracket. Kofi's <laughs> not even phased.
Resilience, yo, people. Yo, Desire in the back just... Resilience. Like, this was like Larry out in the back. We got Freelancer. This is a wild crowd. So Freelancer Leo came up from Louisiana, and he has quite the reputation for being a, a hype monster. Okay. He's crazy. But like Maryland feeling themselves too? That is an electric crowd out there. Yeah, there, there is definitely a lot of yelling if you guys can't hear it yourself. But yeah, right now. Ah, uh, we picked into the 5%. Oh. Welcome to Kofi's Mr. Game & Watch. Mr. Game & Watch. Now, this, this is definitely like the flavor of the month right now. All over Twitter, people saying uh, top 10 and all that jazz. <laughs> I mean, I, I do think the character is very good, but I, I personally think that the uh, character's matchup chart isn't top 10-esque. There's a lot of characters that just, if you outrange and outpower Game & Watch, aka if you're a sword character, you probably beat Game & Watch pretty hard. I um, agree. And Hold there's a lot on, of them. Please. A lot of swords in this game. Yeah. But, I mean, he still, like, can do it against sword characters, and he's just, that, that up out of shield is just so strong. It, it is so good. It's so good. And as a character pick, I can see why Kofi would want this. He's had a Game & Watch for some time now. Okay. Um... And it's good for fighting against certain zoners with, but I don't know if this kind of a pressure on situation is what do you want? I, I mean, it's working out so far. He's keeping things even. He'll have plenty of opportunity to extend his ledge play. And Game Watch in his own right has a lot of opportunity for breaking out of stuff. I'll be out of shield is insane. As a combo breaker, as a combo starter, just as a general disrupting tool. Now, the chat might be wondering, why is Up B so strong in this game, but it wasn't in Smash 4? Well, let me tell you why. Oh! Wow, that fair killed him. I don't know if MJ got that yeah, I don't. properly. <laughs> <laughs> that should not kill the way that I mean, I know that move's pretty strong, but like, damn. <laughs> so in Smash 4, the, uh, the firemen on the side of the Up B were win boxes, but in this game, they're actual hit boxes. So it actually... Uh, it's very quick, frame three, and it has hitboxes on both sides instead of win boxes now. That's why it's very, very powerful move in this game. And Game Watch got the combos too. Look at that, 48 on the board here already for Kofi. Yeah, game Watch is sort of like the unsung hero of Long Island. There's a few that just sort of sneak around. Dang, you just called Game Watch a hero? I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to ask you to retract that statement, sir. <laughs> like this, <laughs> this character just gets to do things. Oh, he really man. just gets the swing. Dang. Kofi out here sitting on his first stock still. Yeah, and he reflected the uh, the gyro as well. Okay, okay. We got the back air connects. Tr catches Kofi being a little ambitious with the up smash. It is a pretty safe smash attack to do. And there's the up B out of shield. Uh, Rob Nair is very safe and hard to punish out of shield. But uh, Game & Watch, probably the best out of shield game in terms of like how fast his option is and what he gets out of it. Because like, he combo that. off of it. And it covers both sides. You know, it has an insane amount of range. It has an intangibility on startup. So, like, you can see someone above you and be like, oh, I'm just going to up be on reaction because even if you're throwing out a hitbox, I'm invincible. It's like, why touch the shield? Like, don't play that mini game. You don't need to touch his shield. He's oh, yeah. going to leave it eventually. Yeah, Game Watch is very... the He's... You have to play against this character very, very different. And that's why I think a lot of people are kind of getting messed up by him just because they just don't really know the matchup too well. And there's, like I said, there's no other character that you really fight like Game & Watch. He's definitely one of those characters that forces you to do your homework, especially if you're fighting against like a well-known one. Oh yeah. Sure. Although I do not fault MJ for not knowing that this is a character that could have come out. Oh yeah. While on Kofi's Long Island, pockets are deep. they are very deep. Kofi's pockets are very deep and wait a minute, the air dodge. Up, oh, okay. Get the up air. Yep. That should be it. Yep. He might. No, nah, he was probably dead regardless, but the DI wasn't amazing on that. There's the up. He out of shield here. Now, can MJ bring this back? The one thing about Game Watch is he is extremely light. So, with the full tank of rage, MJ could get a kill at 40 or 50%. That is a possibility here. Now, with another fair connecting, it's going to manage the kill. So, all right. Game three going in favor of Kofi. He keeps himself in. Dude, it's like Kofi's boys are popping off. Someone's patting <laughs> his back. Not even doesn't crack a smile. Just sips the water. He's like, there's not even is, is there not even like the troll inside of Kofi that's smiling right now? It's like <laughs> I just two stuck you internally. Game watch. <laughs> yeah, internally he's definitely got like the smirk. Game and watch happened. I it's I so rag on him stomach. all the time for his game and watch, but it's 
they managed to get the job done. Game four brings us to Pokemon Stadium too, and I feel like this is a lot of real estate that MJ is going to have to control all for himself. Rob has phenomenal tools for space denial here. Yeah, I feel like if you're MJ right now, you're you might be sweating more than Kofi because MJ's thinking like, "Yo, am I really going to get reverse thrown by Game and Watch?" <laughs> Yo, like that. <laughs> we can't be having that now, can oh, we? Oh man, I'd be pretty tight. <laughs> But let's see if he can bring it together here. Um, that was only one game, right? He still has two more to go. So he has two more games to adapt to. It's going to be counter picks for the rest of the set, no matter what. Um, so we'll see how it goes here. Game number four here on Pokemon Stadium 2. So one thing I want to bring up, we've seen Bucket plenty of times here, in fact, right, right on cue. But Kofi has not used it to deny laser. And yeah. I feel like the charges from it would at least be good just to present another option. But where Kofi's opting to use the bucket, it's more of a movement option. I feel like that has a lot of value, especially against the way that MJ's been playing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I just love how he's setting up the ledge traps with forward air. Again, like we see this, the double forward air off the full hop. Very <laughs> common option. You can hit that bomb as well, and it is not active right when it comes out. Tries to get the back air. Yeah, you, you got to go for these early kills on Game & Watch. Um, and that's one thing. Game & Watch is a shorter character, so it can be pretty tough. So it, it's weird. Okay, you get That's the, what you got to do. That's what you got to get. You got to get those hard reads because, I mean, it, it's like one of those situations where you're like, man, why is this Pichu at 150? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> It's just because he's so damn hard to hit, and you're, you might not be going for enough like hard reads or just like YOLO options, right? There are times in this game where you really just need a swing, yes. and it'll work. Tries to get the swing there. Tries to get a, yet another stock. If that's high be connected, that would have for sure been another one. And right, I like this. MJ is playing very safe, much so respecting that game and watch shield. Like, there's no real reason for for MJ to approach. He's got the lead. He has all that stage to himself. Okay, he gets the throw here. See if he can get some kind of stock here. Tries to get these uh, dash back options, but. MJ is not drifting into them. Oh, but goes into that up smash right there. Really good anti-air. But, I mean, no rage required to kill this game and watch at 126. So, Kofi's got to be very, very careful. He's coming a little fervently with these nares. And, oh, I like the option the down air from the MJ. But I, don't, I feel like he should go back to the patient style. Just because he was chipping away a lot of damage. And at, least, at the very least, Kofi is approaching a lot with Game & Watch, something we don't often see. So yeah. you can take advantage of that. He gets the roll to center stage here. Oh, and that's what you need to get started. That one nair, that one up air. But it only gets 32, honestly. Okay, and th this is the... Uh, I, this is one of the... I mean, Game & Watch got changed a lot from the last yeah. game, and that up air was a really, really big change. Kind of like a Mega Man-esque up air, if you want to say. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty much like a projectile, upward projectile. Doesn't kill, though. Also, the way that Kofi's been using forward air, I, <laughs> Karina, it's almost reminding me of, like, lasers with a spacey. The way that he'll, like, oh, put right, the bomb, right. put another bomb. Like, Ooh. just using it as, like, a space denial tool, maybe get some damage. It's killed a couple of times, but, like, it's just occupying space. Yeah, occupying space, just really forcing MJ to move in the air in different directions, and that's the kind of control that you want from a character like Game & Watch. It's funny, because both these characters are kind of like setup-esque characters, you know, especially like older. Yeah, the retro characters have like a really odd archetype within Smash where they all have that kind of setup to them. Yeah. Because yeah. like the same could even be said for Duck Hunt, who yeah, won't exactly. be seeing in the top eight. Oh man, this could be it if you just that, the up air. Oh, oh wow! But now with good DI. DI. Yeah, really good stuff. And I, I thought it would be enough with the rage, but barely surviving. Can he get the stock off this? No. Okay, gets the chair. There is a sliver of hope here for Kofi. Sliver. It, it is. It's a thin sliver. Oh, double it's jump. A, oh, but is the top gonna do? No, don't lie to me like that game. He's got to drift in with the peach drift. But he gets a double jump back. Got to get back the ledge. Oh, man. MJ is still keeping up this pressure, but he got the single nair to get everything started, but he drops out of the second one. It's all right. What's our option? Oh. I respect the hell out of it. Uh, you, you had to go for it. Oh, he's still alive. Oh, oh, all what? right. All right. Dang, man. He he, <laughs> he got one. Like, he didn't even, like, <laughs> that's the worst part. I 